Hello, good afternoon, good morning, and good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to, um, to my talk today. I'm going to start this conversation with this slide. I reckon a lot of audience today are product managers or have some interest in product managers. If you think back, if you sit back and think, how many times have you worked on a product that actually required you working with multiple teams? Most of the times product does require working with other teams, but I'm sure there are times where you have worked with multiple product teams spread in R and spread across R and D. Uh, you've worked with, you might have worked with pricing, legal, but the number of team you touch on your product can significantly increase. The question that I want you to, to uh, answer or think about is, how many different types of documents can you think of as a product manager that you might have written or might need to write if you have to align everyone across all these teams and create a shared understanding with all these cross-functional teams to take your product to market? Think about it. Think about all the documents you might have written in the past or anything that comes to mind. I'll just flash the previous screen again. Um, and, and let's give it 10 seconds for you to think through it. Here's the question. How many different types of artifacts you, as a product manager, would need to write to align everyone and create shared understanding with everyone in these cross-functional teams? Guess what? The answer is just one. At least to share, uh, to create a comprehensive, comprehensive shared understanding, you really require just one document. User story maps is the most intuitive and powerful tool that product managers can use to create shared understanding cross-functionally. And that is what we are here to talk of today to talk about. Um, we will talk about how we use, or one you could use user story maps as a communication tool. Um, before we dive deep in, let's quickly look at the structure today. Um, I'd love to introduce myself, so we'll, we'll get there in a, in a second. Um, I will also introduce you to Alice who is a product manager at Amazing Inc. We'll talk about user story maps. We'll look at, uh, definitely look at the concepts. We'll look at some examples. And I have a takeaway template if that becomes interesting to anyone. Um, okay, so let's go in. My name is Abhijit Mehta. I am a director of product management at Algolia. I work on the Algolia search team. Uh, quickly as my background, I'm an engineer by education and currently product manager by trade. Uh, I've been programmer, software architect, solutions architect, and product manager in my past lives. Just before Algolia, I was head of product management at Impala, which is a travel tech startup in, in the UK. And as I mentioned, I'm working and leading on, on Algolia search team, uh, currently as director of product management. Okay, so that, that's about me. Let's just move past that now. Um, and, and meet our um, hero for today, really. So Alice, um, I'll, I'll just give you an introduction, but I should make a few quick disclaimers. Um, whoever is watching this uh, presentation today, if you see a picture, if you see references for names, these are all picked up by me from the internet uh, for today's demonstration so that I can deliver my story and deliver a message over to you. If this is, if there is anyone has any objections, please let me know and we can take it off. Um, so yeah, that's the disclaimer. All right, let's move forward. So there is this company here in the UK, it's called Amazing Inc. This is all made up by the way. Uh, but but for now, let's just imagine there is, there is actually real companies, uh, but I'm hiding them through, on, behind this make, made up name. So yeah, it's, uh, it's founded in 2014, um, has been seeing rapid growth, um, especially last four years. And now the number of employee counts is about 4,000 spread across multiple cont continents. They've got a lovely view um, from, from the rooftop of the Gherkin. Alice Jane Doe, who we just talked about, is a product manager. With such a lovely view, she goes, she went to office quite frequently. She still goes. Um, she joined the company as an employee number 76. So over the time in the office, she built great relationships with engineering and design. 
she actually exemplified the product design and engineering relationship in her day-to-day job. Um, she had led three products and shipped tons of features and capabilities um, for customers. And now she is working on a new product in 2023. Um, this is supposed to define the next decade for uh, for Amazing Inc. She has been very successful in creating aligned teams. She'd been office, she spent time with engineering, design, whoever it needed to be. She'll spend ideation session um, discussions. She's just been an amazing product manager. You could probably think of uh, yourself in a seat, isn't it? Um, this is something we do yeah, as PMs in a day in and day out. Um, but things have changed. Things have changed quite significantly. And specifically for her, in her context, if you think about, um, the company grew. And um, her calendar started filling up. Uh, is this something you could relate to? If you, if, you, if you do relate to something like this, where your calendars um, started filling up your day, you actually did not have time to sit down and, and do your have focused time to work through it. You're meeting people, you're spending time reviewing roadmaps, one-to-one designs, design reviews, product reviews, and whatnot. Does it, does it make sense? Have you experienced this? Please, please do no, drop a note in the chat and I'd love to uh, think through, think about it and, and even talk to you about it. Um, some interesting things here. If you look at this, this specific examples, uh, within, within the span of less than two days, Alice had spent time talking about the same thing to four, in four different meetings. That's four hours uh, of a time. Guess what? Because the user types have increased over time and she's now addressing complex user needs. It's not just one user, one straightforward use case. She's been working on complex user needs. The teams have now become remote and distributed post pandemic specifically. And she is impacting large number of teams. The work she's directing impacts the impacts many, many roadmaps. Um, so there's a lot of cross-functional dependent, dependencies. And this is why the model of getting in a room and being able to convey uh, and create shared understanding is not working anymore. She's left with this problem. It's a good problem, still a problem. It's good because it is it is delivering higher impact for the company. It's good for her career, but still a problem. Um, she's onto something big, but she's she's a bit overwhelmed right now. She has sold it, and this is what we are going to um, look at. Um, we talked about today's uh, conversation, specifically about user story maps. It is a multi-purpose tool. This is what Alice is going to deploy now. This is what she deployed to handle all this, and we'll, we'll learn that uh, technique in the next 10, 15 minutes. So this tool is useful because it brings customer centricity right on the forefront. Um, through these tools, User needs are handled very clearly in a crisp manner. Um, one can also look at different customer segmentations. It is actually a living description of product. This is how product looks like to customer. This is how it behaves. It's that living documentation. But it is also usable as a planning, planning item. You can actually abstract away. Sorry, you can actually extract user stories out of this and that can go into your Jira backlog. Um, this also allows for a cross-functional cohesion. How do different teams work in what order so that you together advance um, product ahead and it, it it creates empowered teams. We'll talk about this all but this is a multi-purpose tool and I can spend a lot of time explaining why is communication important. Um, what is the benefit of this? But today's focus is going into the detail, like diving in and understanding how to use this tool. But again, if you do think that um, discussing the benefits of it, why is it actually absolutely required, like various nuances of, of user story map and the benefits, um, let me know in, your, uh, in, in the comments and maybe we can arrange another session for that. But for now, let's dive in. Let's look at the anatomy of user story map. I'd love to explain this to you um, in step by step. 
let's the first thing you need to know is it is meant to tell a story and as the name suggests it's the story of the user so i'll take an example let's talk about dennis um i'm guessing a lot of you probably have heard the name and um, i definitely grew up um reading about dennis even watching um, watching shows about dennis um so yeah he he was a he was a character that uh, that was well known at my time at least um so dennis the menace goes to school and we are going to now um talk about and and look at the anatomy of a user story map uh to do the job of getting dennis the menace to the school I'll just call him Dennis going forward. Um, okay, so as I was saying, the very important thing to know is it's a narrative uh, flow. If you if you look at a user story map from left to right, it basically tells you the overall experience that a user described in this story map is going to uh, have. And and if if there are other diff- different types of users coming to uh, come together to achieve a specific goal. when you actually create or just think about how to go about um, the user story map describe describe it as if you would be describing to a friend don't skip the details bring in different actor and personas and and start with what you have in mind don't don't focus too much on adding details right away you can come back and start adding details as well so yeah think about this as if you are telling a story to a friend about something about how a thing a very specific thing can be accomplished and that specific thing can expand the spectrum of that can be something as simple as sending sending dennis to school to creating uh, apple pay or or an email client or your product whatever that product you are working on um so it is a narrative flow and i spend a lot of time here because this is absolutely important you need to understand the goal is get to that story you all the users coming into that story should work together to get a thing done okay next year so as i said you need to figure out who are the users who are the actors who are the personas that will show up as you try to do that thing that you you trying to do you try to achieve the goal that the product is is being built for um so in this case forget the product for now let's look at user story map um remember we want to send tennis and i just realized this a uh, missing n there sorry about that um so we the goal here is to send dennis to the school the three actors that would come into play here are dad mom and dennis um so once we've figured out who the personas are let's try adding uh, the narrative um so in your head you can think about if tennis has to go to the school uh we can we can start from what happens in the morning um so, so let's just assume the dad is responsible to get tennis in the uniform while mom gets the bag ready and then is obviously have to do a bunch of stuff himself um so the first thing that you add after identifying user are the high level activities these are the things that needs to be achieved these are the these are the biggest highest level goals that needs to be achieved for their overall uh, goal to be successful so in this case the examples are that ta- dad needs to get dennis in the school uniform now he'll need to do a bunch of things but like that's the goal dad is trying to achieve mom gets the school bag ready and again she might have to do a um, um, bunch of other things as well but that's what she's trying to do while dad is getting him in uniform she's getting the school bag ready um dennis himself have to get up uh, because his dennis he'll cause some trouble um like i guess uh, every other children child uh, would not necessarily directly wake up but eventually you know dennis will get ready and then go to school so these are the activities that dennis will perform or, or all the actors will need to perform uh, for dennis to go to the school now we go level 2d um now we'll start adding sub activity Uh, so, so some examples here are for dennis to get ready he has to wake up or he has to get dressed but he's also he needs to get his bag ready so you know mom's getting bag ready she's bringing it in but dennis the person who needs to put it all together 
Um, so that's uh, another sub activity uh, he need to perform for himself to be get ready. And then he needs to eat the breakfast before he could go to the school. So you probably get an idea. Now, sub activity, uh, as a side note, might um, not necessarily be a thing you, you, you always add. And if you actually read a lot of literature around user story map, you might you might not necessarily see sub activity. But in my experience, I have found this useful. Um, so I definitely always recommend keeping this as a as a placeholder and see where it is needed. Sometimes breaking it down uh, actually gives a lot of granularity um, and details that that help communicate with cross functional team. And and you know in examples, a uh, few minutes down the line, it will become clear. So let's stick with that. We've got some activity sorted. Time to go next level deeper. Um, and I'll just take some examples here, right? Uh, because user story map quickly becomes quite big. So let's take the, the first um, persona here, which is the dad who's getting Dennis in, in the uniform. Um, so that's the goal he's trying to achieve. We haven't identified any sub activity straight into tasks. So tasks are important. These are the steps, like really small steps that will need to uh, to be done. Like, in, in, if you think about this, the one I've identified here, the five five steps, actually there could be more. It could be dad needing to set up an alarm at the night, waking up, um, walking downstairs if they are on different floors, things like that. These are detailed steps. Um, these are the things that will need to be done. These are tasks. Um, these are not necessarily the goal, but you need to do them in a specific order um, to, achieve, um, to achieve your goal. Uh, the specified at activity level. So dad here is waking up, going to the going to the room uh, where Dennis, um, so Dennis's room, um, wakes Dennis up. Uh, obviously Dennis might or might not wake up in the, immediately. So there could be other steps here. Um, reminds him, keep reminding him to get out of the bed. Eventually get Dennis, uh, put the uniform on the bed and get Dennis um, in the uniform. If you think about Dennis, he's waking up. Obviously, he'll act sleepy for a bit, but finally wake up, brush, shower, wear uniform. If you think about these tasks, right, brush is not necessarily the ultimate um, activity he's trying to perform. It's not the goal. It's a, it's a step Dennis is performing to get ready. Um, so these are these are tasks. Now, let's step back. Let's see the ten. Maybe the, the scenario that we should have talked about in the past was very specific to the start of the school year. Okay, so let's assume that we wrote this story at for day one, month one of start of school year. Usually, you know, you'd want to, uh, if, if, you're, if you're a parent, you might know that you want to ease your kid up. Um, as a as a new school year starts, so maybe that's what dad dad and mom are trying to do here for tennis. Um, but maybe as the school uh, school year proceeds, they might want to add a bit of an exercise. So now you can create layers on the same activity. So getting Dennis in uniform in the first month of the year doesn't have exercise. You're, you're easing them in. It's not it's it's not the most mandatory thing that is required in this first month. But you might want to add us. This is good. This is better, delightful. Uh, I shouldn't use the word delightful here, essentially. Um, but yeah, it is. It is. It is better for Dennis if he can accommodate ten minutes of exercise. So you layer that in. You plan it for for the next month, and and essentially, th if you expand this for everything that is needed from the time um, everyone goes to sleep till the time Dennis reaches school, you could plot this left to right each detailed activity um, into this. And, and this is what user story map is. Now we took a real world example, but let's let's let strip these off and look at the core anatomy here. It's uh, com so, so this is what it would look like in general. Um, you start at persona level, um, you start identifying activity, sub activity, and then add st smaller tasks. Um, you do want to slice your task into the things that are absolutely mandatory and then start having nice to haves. In, in a real product cycle, um, these slices, these group of tasks that slice between the two dotted lines are releases. This could be your, uh, the first would be your pilot, um, and then you follow on to your next releases. 
let's take some examples here uh, for concrete examples to to start making sense of this structure um, let's say let's say you're a product manager at apple and you were you're trying to do um, to add or create apple pay um, so i've tried to put an example together obviously this is not the most detailed but this is enough to convey the story uh, and 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 explain and, and demonstrate how the story map use here. So let's bring in a persona for an iPhone user. Um, actually, you know what? As of, as we go through this, please think of these activities and sub activities and tasks in your head that you might want to add. Um, I would actually say that pull up a white piece of paper and and start putting and and plotting this for yourselves as well. And you'll you'll immediately see um, the benefits of it. So the high level activity this this user performs is you know they have a phone they unlock the phone they want to set up a card on the apple wallet and then eventually when they are at a gas station or a supermarket they would want to pay with apple pay um in future sitting at home they might want to check the transaction as well so let's say these are like the key activities that a, a iphone user would would want to achieve when they're using apple pay now you can start putting sub activities. Let's pick up uh, the setup uh, setup activity card and expand there. Um, when they want to add an Apple Wallet, um, a card on the Apple Wallet, well, first of all, if it, this is the very first time the Apple Wallet, Apple Pay is being launched, they might want to learn about it. They might want to watch a tutorial. Um, if they have done that, um, an activity we would require, or or you as a product manager at Apple would require, is for them to accept terms and conditions and then finally add a credit card. Um, so you could see that these are the tasks, like if you go task level, these are detailed uh, steps. So launch Apple Wallet, read the introduction page when you want to learn about Apple Wallet. And this would be the first sub activity you will do eventually to, um, to, to set up card on Apple Wallet. Let's look at watch, uh, let's look at add credit card. Um, the, the tasks there will be Type a credit card number, add your name, add a date, click submit, um, and and that's your MVP for Apple Pay. But guess what? That is just an MVP or MLP maybe. It's a lovable product in itself. But you want to, as a PM, you want to continuously make it easier for customers to use. Um, so so the next release in the add credit card sub activity, you would add another feature. That is, they could point a camera to the credit card and scan and get everything automatically populated. So you could see now how iteratively you can start slicing releases uh, in this format. Um, I haven't said it so far, but I'm going to do this now um, about uh, how does this can, how, how would one extract a user story for engineering team here? So um, let's pick, let's pick the, the same set of tasks that we were just talking about, right? And let's start from the top. I'm going to I'm going to write a user story now from here. So as an iPhone user, that, that there comes the user here. I want to add a credit card number and my name and date so that I can add a credit card to Apple Pay for setting up Apple Card. Uh, so setting up a credit card on Apple Wallet. That is a full user story that can go and become an epic in your backlog. And, and that's how you see when I mentioned you can extract user stories from this user story map. Let's take another example. Um, an email client, right? Um, let's say you were you were a product manager at Google and, and were trying to create a, a Gmail client for the first time. So high level activities um, as a Gmail user, um, they want to organize their emails, manage the emails and manage contacts, like very basic stuff. You can see, uh, let's take pick manage email activity. The sub activity there would be compose an email, read an email and delete an email. You could actually keep adding lots of activities, right? Like, uh, as I mentioned, think about other activities. You can think about add a call and, uh, manage a calendar. Um, that could be another activity, add interactions, chat, whatnot. So you can, you can expand, expand that um, horizontally as well. Um, Okay, coming back to manage email. So now think of various releases here. The first release, the very basic would have been 
I'm sure when someone at Google were thinking about Gmail client, the first set of releases they would have talked about was basic email. If you actually started using Gmail in, in that period, you might you might remember that as well. Um, so yeah, what does it require? It requires setting, writing a basic email, text based, send, send that email out. Um, in the next iterations, next versions, you would create an HTML email and then ability to add attachments. So this is how it could be used. Hopefully these two examples gave you um, gave you a, a good view into how it can be used in a product life cycle. So I talked about this being a multi-purpose tool, um, but have we actually covered, have I actually demonstrated um, everything that I mentioned earlier? Not so much yet. And there are a few things that I, I definitely feel that we haven't actually seen. Like in the previous examples, the two examples we talked about, this doesn't show how this is a, a cross-functional cohesive action tools. It doesn't show that. It also doesn't show dependencies. It doesn't show empowered teams. So let's expand on that. Let's just take this example and add a layer to it. Um, so I've added now um, um, a uh, another, another set of um, cards called teams. So you'll see now within those activities, I have, I've actually split the, the compose email into two. The first one as an email client, so the, the ability for someone to log in and, and see a interface and create a basic email. And so that that is a different sub activity than storing and sending that email. Um, and, and there the team identified is the API team, internal API team. And, and this is this is where the activity sub activity thing becomes important. So as a user, you don't care about, or you don't even know that uh, there is the email is being stored or sent, or maybe you know, but you don't really care. What you care, care about is managing email. So activity, that level is where uh, that remains same, which is, but at sub activity, you can actually break it down um, on slightly system levels. Um, when you're thinking about building that managed email uh, customer capability. So here now the, the things, the sub activity that has been identified is compose email, um, storing and sending of my email that I just composed as a user. And then I also want to be certain that this is safe. Um, so now you can see the internal teams that would come into play for these user activities. It's, it's actually also expanded from just user activity to user needs, right? Um, being certain is not an activity, but it's a need uh, that that is expected um, from the product that, that it should be safe. So if you expand them, you can now start adding other tasks. Spam check would come into picture. Virus scan in release three, version 1.2 would come into picture. And the team that would be taking care of it, uh, slightly misplaced virus scan card, that should be under security. Um, so yeah, security. Um, so now you can see that how different teams come together. Internal R&D teams come, come together for, for one activity, which is manage email. And you have actually, as a PM who was driving this whole thing, have showed that in one, one artifact. You brought them together and shown the order of things. You've also shown them how this will, uh, this needs to come together. It's, and, and still like from a customer perspective. Um, let's add another layer here to make it more useful. So I talked about user segmentation as tool, right? Gmail is used as a free tool for individuals, but it's also a, a part of G Suite, uh, which is a business tool. So in that case, there are two users or two personas that would come into picture. Someone in a corporate needs to configure uh, an account and then only the Gmail business user can start using. So let's just assume for now Gmail business users behave exactly the same as Gmail individual. We wouldn't look at that exactly the same. But now you have, by putting another user in in the story, um, you have you have identified a different set of, uh, of set of requirements that needs to be done prior to the users, the Gmail users coming to life on your product. Um, so configuring an account, configuring single sign-on, managing users requires the enterprise and identity and management. Um, I sorry, I am identity and access management team to come and and uh, you know deliver a few things on the product suite before you could. 
uh, actually give it over to the customers. So this is again a full lifetime of uh, of a user or set of users on Gmail client, and uh, but now expanded into two different users. And if you combine this and the previous one, you have actually created different segment of customers in this artifact as well. So this this is where it starts to get more and more useful. Now, if you if you've read about user story maps and you've read other artifacts, these are not the layers that are present there. This is something. Um, you know, through experience and and through using user story maps in in my product uh, is you know something I've added to the default template that I use for myself. I've certainly seen other PMs in my previous teams use similar templates. Um, so this is this is slightly a uh, enhanced version of what a uh, no, usual user story map template you will see. Um, let me know if this makes sense to you in in the chat, um, and um, hopefully. Now we can take all the boxes. Actually, let me quickly cover the empower teams point here as well. Once you have presented this view as a PM who's driving this entire thing, um, the individual teams, enterprise team, or identity and access management team, or email client team, they can see where their roles come into um, into picture. How do they contribute to an overall mission? So now with that missions figured out, you can empower them to go and do their own stuff. They can manage their um, backlog separately. They can be part of this this entire user story map as well. But they would know exactly what the biggest bigger mission is, um, and they can they can join hands there. So you've, you've you've this is a way or one of the things you would want to do if you want to, if you believe in empower teams. Um, great. So that is hopefully. Um, um, that has hopefully made sense to you. Hopefully you found why I strongly recommend using this tool and 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 how this can be used as a multipurpose tool. Um, I have to mention this. This is like the Bible for user story mapping. Jeff Patton uh, has written a book. I'd highly recommend you, you go and read this book. Before we close, let me show you uh, the template that I was talking about. Um, this is... Um, this is a template built on Excel. You can use it on Miro or, or whatnot. Um, but let me quickly so, show you um, my Excel version of template. So here you can see the different personas are on the topmost. Um, multiple personas would come into picture. So in this developer is one of the personas. And then you expand high level is the user activity. Um, these are sub activities. And you can actually create this can become a very detailed artifact. So you can expand and see that you know the whole life cycle of um, of a customer or all the three users can be seen through this spreadsheet. Vertically, you can see that different releases have been identified. Um, there is a task uh, tweet and summary uh, of the expected impact, so anyone can quickly view. But when you expand here, um, okay. Let me see. Obviously, it's not expanding. Okay, there you go. Well, you can imagine when it expands. Sorry about this. Uh, I don't know why is it not expanding. But if you expand, you'll see the tasks here, um, the yellow, um, the yellow cards that we talked about. So, if this template is of interest, I'm happy to share. Drop a note in the chat, and I will, I will share this spreadsheet template to you. Um, that is all from me for today. Hopefully that you find it useful. Uh, if you want to connect with me, follow me. There, those are my LinkedIn and Twitter profiles. And uh, with that, I'll take your leave. Thank you. Have a good remaining rest of the day.